Thank you, the gentleman. The gentleman from Utah is recognized. Thank you, Chairman. I'd actually yield to, to the gentleman from Ohio. I, I appreciate the gentleman. You know, just real, real quick in, in uh, answering Mr. Cartwright's line of question, I just remind the committee again, we have the ACA Implementation IRS Oversight Board Briefing, May 2nd, 2013, the document we got from the IRS Oversight Board. Ms. Uh, Ingram did that briefing. Page 7 of the minutes says, Affordable Care Act update but led by Sarah Hall Ingram. She discussed the security and safeguard programs the IRS has in place regarding the sharing of data among its partners. So she was, it was, again, good enough for her to brief the IRS Oversight Board. It seemed like it would be appropriate for her to brief this committee in Congress. Um, I want to go back to the email real quickly, if I could. Um, let's go back. I just want to stress for the committee the underlying issue here was about 58 different institutions who were suing the government because they believed their religious liberty rights, their First Amendment religious liberty rights were being infringed upon by the Affordable Care Act. Isn't that correct, Ms. Ingram? This regarded the lawsuits that were in place, that were, that were filed, regarding infringement of religious liberty. I'm, I'm sorry, Congressman. I don't see where the litigation is mentioned. It's not mentioned. That's the under, that's what you're talking about. No, sir. I'm explaining how only schools below works. college level that are affiliated with the church or operated by a religious order. These schools, while exempt from filing, would not meet the religious employer unless they are a church. This is all about institutions. Because again, remember what was going on at this time. The administration was concerned about all these entities suing the government. This is about 6103 rule, 6033 rules in the Internal Revenue Code and how they work. Used to define who, who, who qualifies and who doesn't, who would be exempt and who wouldn't be. And the, the end result was, from your discussions and the way the ruling was changed, most of these lawsuits were dismissed. Lawsuits like Colorado Christian University versus Sebelius, Priests for Life versus Sebelius, Roman Catholic Archbishop of Washington versus Sebelius, Wheaton College versus Sebelius, Hobby Lobby. Some of these things, most of these cases have been dismissed because of the change in the definition that was being discussed in these emails. Correct? All I know to, to respond to you, Mr. Congressman, is that I was answering questions about how current tax definitions worked under 6033. I was not involved in litigation or regulation decisions. You were answering the, the White House wanted to know if they could change the definition. You were giving them information about the definition. And the end result was most of these suits were dismissed. That's what happened. I can't speak to that, sir. I can only explain it. You don't have to speak to it. It's the fact. And it, and it was part of that was determined by the back and forth between the White House and you. And our concern, of course, is in that correspondence that resulted in most of these cases being dismissed, you shared, at least by someone's definition at the IRS, you shared personal taxpayer information with the White House. And now... And now, under the Affordable Care Act, and now under the Affordable Care Act, Americans have to give personal information to the IRS, to the same lady, to the same organization that potentially, at least by someone's definition, shared all kinds of personal information with the White House political people. At a time, this took place again at a time when religious institutions were suing the government because the Affordable Care Act infringed on their religious liberty rights. That's what people are nervous about. That scares a lot of people. You guys working back and forth, personal information, going in emails, the end result is lawsuits get dismissed, religious institutions don't get their day in court, and now all of America has to send the same kind of personal information to you and the IRS in order to get health care. May I have a minute to respond, sure. sir? First, I will let the committee and the specialists in 6103 law provide the explanation as to why it would not have been 6103 problem for me to have this email, but a 6103 issue vis-a-vis -vis the committee, and I will let you and they work that out. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Just stop right there a second. So it was okay. That's amazing. That is true. It's okay for the White House to get the unredacted version, political people at the White House, from the same entity that targeted groups who came into existence because they opposed the Affordable Care Act, but Congress can't get it. That's just what, that, that is, that is unbelievable. You just told us it's okay, you said, you didn't do anything wrong, it's okay for the White House to get this information, but we on the oversight, government oversight committee can't get the same information. 
I cannot answer what is under those blocks, so I cannot answer whether the information originated with the White House or not. And this I is phenomenal. You, to you wrote it. You don't know what's underneath those blocks. But it was okay for the White House to get it, but it's not okay for us to get it. And Americans are supposed to rest assured the IRS will treat their personal information when they are forced by the law to sign up for the Affordable Care Act. Americans are supposed to rest assured you guys will treat that in a confidential fashion. Unbelievable. Time is up. My time has expired. I'll go ahead and yield back. Thank the gentleman for yielding. Mr. Tierney is recognized.